Hello everyone and welcome to Things of Africa. I'm David Odinla Fakwanda, visionary and president of Things of Africa. Um, recall that we started 180 days of emphasis on the teens ministry two days ago. Today is the third day in this current series. And from the first day we started considering this topic, the battle of seeds. We trust the Lord to help us to press into deeper realms today. Why are we doing this? Aside being an instruction from the Lord, I strongly believe that God wants to equip us for this assignment. In the corporate world, there comes a time, regardless of the level of the productivity of the members of staff, even the managerial, um, those at the management level or the executive level, there is always a need for retraining. This is because if we are not retrained, we are not equipped, we are not updated in our knowledge and skills, we will keep up status quo. And status quo is a sure antidote. And status quo is a sure formula for extension of any company, any organization, however great the achievement in the past might have been. So as we get started today, I want us to approach this training, this conversation with that understanding that God is equipping us to do more and to be more for Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We are grateful. For that which your spirit is said to do, we open up our hearts and we receive the fullness of all that you have planned for this training. Deal with my mouth. Let there be an outpour of wisdom from my lips and understanding for your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Okay, so remember that yesterday we i mean yesterday's flow was awesome was awesome all right so today we will continue for where we stop the battle of seeds it is really important that we understand the nature of the battle we are fighting um in the military or say national security one of the things that makes for victory that um makes for an advantage, all right, added advantage for victory, for security, for any nation, is the ability of the um, security architecture of such a nation to understand the dynamics of the security threat they are facing. So for instance, the way you attack a guerrilla warfare is not the same way you solve terrorism. You see that now. Uh, these are different uh, or conventional warfare, all right? These are different or economic warfare or cyber warfare, all right? These are different. It's still warfare, all right? The idea is to use up authority or take over territory, all right, through show of power. But you would agree with me that these different warfares that I just mentioned can be fought in the same way. So in the same way, God wants us to understand for us the nature of the warfare. Uh, that presupposes that we have agreed that the teens ministry itself is a call to battle. It's a war. Little one that God says it's the battle for seeds. It's the battle for seeds. There is a contention for seeds. And when we have that understanding, we will be able to galvanize all of the apparatus, is all of the tools that God will, you know, equip us with to fight and fight to win. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to share the scripture with us, 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 15. It says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are now able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. I want to share with us one of the reasons why there is so strong a massacre of our teenagers. When I mean massacre, I do not literally mean I mean extinction of life, but you can tell that they are not leaving. 
Because true life is in Jesus. And if they are not in Jesus, that means they are dead. We can as well agree that the over 200 million teenagers in Africa, a chunk of this population are a walking dead. Because if they die now, they are going to hell. And I'm sure you know that judgment will not exempt teenagers. It won't. The Bible says it is appointed for man to die once and after death is judgment. Amen. Glory to God. So the big question is, why are our teenagers this weak? Why do we have teenagers who cannot face the devil in the open, who cannot face immorality in the open? Why are we always uh, scared, not sure if they will withstand the sexual pressure, the, the violence pressure, the pressure to join courtism, all right, the, 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 the pressure to go into prostitution, the pressure, all right, to go into fraudulent stuffs, all right, all in the name of making money. All right. Why are we so scared? Why are we not so 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 concerned about the fact that oh, if they go to to go to school today, they will come back with souls. Why are we not so concerned about the fact that if they go to school today, oh, I hope they wouldn't be able to face their studies and they won't be distracted with evangelism. Why are we not so much bothered about the fact that if they go out there to the university, they will be uh, taken over with passion for soul winning and outreaches to villages? Why are we not so much concerned about trying to create a balance for them? Why are we not so much concerned over burdening about our teenage girls loving the Lord and pouring themselves on? You know, they give things, maybe they sing on how they will deploy their talent, writing new songs. Why are we not so much concerned about telling them, hey, hey, you need to balance things? Why are we so much concerned about them not being overtaken by good? Why are we not so much overburdened about them being taken over with zeal for the Lord? Why is our emphasis always around, oh, we don't want them to mess up. We don't want them to make mistakes. Huh? Oh, we don't want them to start dating. We don't want them to start, you know, fornicating around. We don't want them to be pregnant. We don't want them to impregnate people. We don't want them to be, you know, once we say, why? Why? It is simply because we are choosing the wrong strategies. We are trying to treat a tree by treating the fruit is too late if we observe that there is any defect at the level of the fruit is already too late it's already too late in fact if you are trying to treat the tree at the branch level is almost too late the infection is on the fruit on the branches on the leaf because it stems too many times from the root not even the branches not even the stem and you know I, I believe so strongly that tonight God wants us to focus on this aspect God is asking us a daring question do you really know why the emphasis is always one day mess up one day break God's heart one day compromise God is asking you and I that question tonight. And here is the answer. The answer is because we have not invested in teaching, in training. We do not have teenagers that have lives, Christian lives, kingdom experiences that is a product of deep teaching, deep training, practical training, that has birthed for conviction. That is the word. Conviction. How many of our teenagers have convictions about sexual purity? Most of them are not, you know, uh, messing around because they don't want to be impregnated. So the day they find out, oh, there is a way to go about this, and you don't get them impregnated, they lose hold of the truth. Some of them is because, oh, they don't want to disappoint their parents. So eventually, the day their parent dies, what happened? There's nothing holding them back. Do they have solid convictions built on scriptures as to why they can't do this, as to why they can't do that? 
And I believe so strongly tonight that God is giving us an assignment, a stern assignment. He's telling us, will you raise a people of conviction for me? What is the difference between Moses and Israelite? Moses knew the ways of God. The children of Israel understood the acts of God. They love the goodies of God. They love the goodness of God. But they do not know the person of God. How many of our teenagers have profound, deep, viable relationship with Jesus? How many of them knows why they do quiet time? Some of them, yes, they have devotional guides. How many of them knows why they do? How many of them do? It is a people of conviction that can face the enemy. The story goes back to the book of Samuel, for Samuel to be precise. As David faced Goliath, all the armies of Israel were Israelites. They were covenanted people. Saul was there. He was anointed. He knew a bit about the Lord. He had the backing of the prophet. But on the day when conviction is being tested, every single person backed out. Because this day, it was the battle of conviction. Not a battle of swords, not a battle of, uh, of spear, not a battle of, of javelin, not a battle of clubs. It was a battle of convictions. And only those who have convictions can face the battle. And everyone else went back. For 40 days, nobody there came out to confront the enemy. Because they do not have the strength of conviction. In the phase of conviction, the battle of conviction, our smartest girls will give in to a fornicator, to a serial fornicator. In the phase of the battle for convictions, our boys will give in, to, oh yes, they will. They will. In the face of the contention for convictions, our girls, our teenage girls, will give in to lecturer begging for their body in exchange for marks. Regardless of how, this, how smart they are. In the phase of the battle for conviction, our boys will take a puff of India hemp in their hostels. They will be lured to internet fraud and nobody will know anything about it because they will implode if they don't explode. How many teenagers in church, sons and daughters of ministers of God have imploded? They didn't explode. We didn't know about it. But inside, they have imploded. They have been conquered. Their will have been conquered. Their convictions around scriptures, around Christianity has been conquered. Worse enough, how many of our teenagers do not even believe in Jesus anymore? They are now thinking about the, the, the world religion, the new world order. Some of them that are given to so much knowledge have gone ahead to research the new world order. Some of them have salient passion, salient uh, appetite for illuminati. Some of them are now moving towards a teasing. Yes, you will be surprised when you have one-on-one -on -one conversation with some really smart teenagers, you will be surprised the level of knowledge and research they have gone into. Some of them have gone so deep to start questioning the, the, the validity of scriptures. Think about this. And this is happening because we have not raised them on the views of convictions. Glory to God. We have not raised them on the beams of conviction. And even as we begin to round up tonight's meeting, I tell you it's not going to be a long one. We have 180 days to go. Minus three now. God is asking us, the teenagers, the children under your care, either you're a teacher, you're a principal, you're a vice principal, all right, uh, you're a non-teaching staff, you're a lecturer, you're an HOD in a department in the university, you're a vice chancellor, you are, you are uh, the dean of, of, of student affairs. God is asking each and every one of us, you're a parent, you're a teen minister, you're a general overseer. God is asking every one of us a single question. Are we raising kids built on convictions? Are we, are we raising kids built on convictions? Oh, that we will do this for the Lord. 
or that we will risk it. Jesus built the 12 on convictions. He still lost one. How much more he will raise hundreds and thousands of teenagers without convictions. But the 12 he built on, I mean the, the, the 11 that stayed, all right, that he built on conviction, they, cha- they, they shook the world. They changed the world for him. Those who will take the word are not butter and bread teenage Christians. They are teenagers founded upon convictions. This was the secret of Timothy. He was a person who from childhood has been taught the Holy Scriptures. He's been taught in mass in the Holy Scriptures. He has listened back to back as missionaries who come to the house of his mother and grandmother talk about their exploit and their persecution. He's been immersed into the experience. He wasn't just engrossed in the choir. He wasn't just engrossed in playing the piano or playing the sax or playing the drums. He was engrossed in the Holy Scriptures. He was battered after the same order. Little one I became not just a bishop but later an apostle of the Lord Jesus. But this is the correct pattern for the teens' ministry. Let me ask you tonight, how strong is your teaching ministry in your teens' ministry? What do you teach them? Do you just tell them stories? Bible stories? Do you tell them, do, do you bring scriptures alive to them? If a demon appears in the dream to one of your teenagers, does he or she know what to do? If they're in lack, they don't know what to do. If they're sick in their body, they don't know what else to do. If they're being persecuted in class, if they're being lured into sin, they don't know what to do. Based on scriptures. If your teenagers are kidnapped, do they know what to wield? Did they have a, a compendium of dimensions in God to wield in the face of, of, of spiritual battle? This is what God is asking us tonight and I ask that the Lord himself will lay these things again and again on the tablets of our heart until we are steered up to action in Jesus mighty name we prayed oh Lord I ask that you do just this for us you will help us to revisit our curriculums in the name of Jesus that we will teach and raise men of conventions Boys and girls of standards, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' matchless name we pray, amen. I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you to um, be a part, all right, of what we are doing, of what God has got us to do, uh, by means of uh, partnership, all right. The Lord has commissioned us this year to start our international mission to so other African countries. We would love you to give towards this mission. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Please do well to send whatever God will be laying on your heart to the account number being displayed on your screen. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for your support. Things of Africa, Bridging the Gap, Raising Giants. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.